It is not without good reason that irony has been the most well-loved dramatic device in stories throughout history. It plays with our expectations of how things should be and surprises us by proving the opposite. Here are 10 examples of irony that will leave you unexpectedly surprised. Number 1. The Drowned Man In 1985, a New Orleans man drowned while attending a pool party for more than 100 lifeguards who were celebrating the first summer with no drownings. The party, held every year at the end of July at a New Orleans Recreation Department pool, was attended by 200 people, including Jerome Moody. No one knows how Moody drowned, but he was found at the bottom of the pool as the lifeguards began cleaning it at the end of the party. Though they tried to revive him, it was already too late. Number 2. Particles versus Waves In 1897, Nobel laureate in physics J.J. Thompson discovered charged particles called electrons. In 1937, his son, G.P. Thompson, won the Nobel Prize for showing that electrons are waves. Though J.J. Thompson won his Nobel Prize for his work on conduction of electricity and gases, his well-known contribution to physics is showing that cathode rays contain negatively charged particles called electrons. G.P. Thompson, on the other hand, demonstrated that electrons exhibit diffraction patterns, proving electrons are waves, and thus providing confirmation of the wave-particle duality of particles, which is now a major tenet of quantum physics. Number 3. America's First Female Mayor In 1887, a woman named Susanna Slater was nominated for a mayoral election as a joke by a group of men to humiliate and discourage women from entering politics. But instead, she won by a two-thirds majority, becoming America's first female mayor. Interestingly enough, Slater wasn't even aware she was nominated before the polls opened. However, when she found out, she agreed to accept office if she was elected. This prompted the Women's Christian Temperance Union to abandon their own candidate to vote for her en masse. The Republicans followed suit, and she became the mayor of Argonia, Kansas. Number 4. London Cab Drivers vs. Uber In 2014, London cab drivers went on a strike against the presence of Uber and brought parts of the city to a standstill. The strike, however, instead of ridding London of Uber, increased the app signups by 850%. When Uber entered London, the city's licensed taxi drivers association wasn't too happy about the new development. At the time, Uber's main challenge was visibility and helping the people understand how to use the app. Because of the strike, journalists and even protest leaders began talking about the app, explaining how it worked. This ended up serving as advertisement and gave the app more credibility than the company's own ads. Number 5. George Harrison's Pine Tree the pine tree planted in 2004, in memory of the Beatles' lead guitarist, George Harrison, died after being infested by beetles. Harrison was a passionate gardener who felt more at home in his garden than anywhere else, and even dedicated his autobiography to gardeners everywhere. Three years after his death in 2001, a Canary Island pine tree was planted in Griffith Park in Los Angeles, only to be devoured by beetles two years later. Long after that, in 2015, to keep his memory intact, a new shrubby yew pine was planted to replace the original. Number 6. Man Who Defied Cancer In 1976, Stomatis moritis was diagnosed by nine doctors with terminal lung cancer and was given six months to live. Three decades later, he was still alive, having outlived all nine doctors. After being diagnosed, the Greek immigrant and war veteran refused to undergo chemotherapy. Considering how expensive funerals are and longing to be buried with his ancestors, he left the United States for his home, the Greek island Ikaria, where he spent his remaining life working in his parents' vineyard. 
Six months passed and decades passed, yet he only grew strong and healthy, dying of natural causes in 2013. Number seven, second sail, unlucky. After surviving the fire and sinking of a ship in 1871, emotionally scarred Ramon Artigavatia overcame his fear and sailed again 41 years later, only to die in the sinking ship Titanic. Ramon's brush with death occurred when the ship America tried to race another ship to the Uruguayan coast, resulting in fire from high boiler pressures. He swam for his life and was one of the 65 surviving of 164 passengers on board. Years later, with his faith in the new wireless telegraph technology to call for immediate help bolstering his confidence in long ocean voyages, Ramon ventured again to sail the seas on the maiden voyage of the Titanic. However, this time he wasn't fortunate enough to survive. Number 8. Lottery Luck A woman named Glenda Blackwell bought a lottery ticket to teach her husband a lesson only to find that she actually won $1 million. In 2016, when Blackwell's husband asked her to get him some Powerball tickets, the North Carolina woman bought a $10 Carolina Million scratch-off ticket instead out of spite to teach him a lesson about wasting money on them. Of the choices she had on how to accept the $1 million she won, she picked the lump sum option and took home $415,503 after taxes. Number 9. White Supremacists' African Roots Craig Cobb, a white supremacist and racist, agreed to taking a DNA test on live TV. The results showed he was 14% sub-Saharan African. Cobb is notorious for celebrating and perpetuating his views under a movement known as Creativity Religion. He appeared on several radio talk shows and was featured in The Trisha Goddard Show in November 2013, where he agreed to take a DNA test and reveal the results on TV. Give it to him! 14% Sub-Saharan African! Wait a minute. Number 10. Hitler's Ancestry DNA analysis of Adolf Hitler's 39 living relatives suggests that he had both Jewish and African ancestors. In 2010, Belgian journalist Jean-Paul Mulders, along with historian Mark Vermeeren, collected saliva samples from the Fuhrer's living relatives for DNA analysis. The test showed that his ancestral roots were set in the Berber tribes of North Africa and had a distinct lineage from the Jewish population. Considering that between 1933 and 1945, Hitler wiped out almost two-thirds of the European Jewish population and committed several atrocities in the name of racial purity of Aryans, he certainly wouldn't have been too happy with this knowledge. That's it, folks. Thank you so much for watching this video. We're working hard to bring you the best video content. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like and please subscribe to our YouTube channel.